<laughs> hey, come join the fun. Bye, <laughs> right, guys. Come, come join us. These are the young adults with all the questions. I may have answers. Tune in and find out. See you next week. See ya. <laughs> Hi, Father Ron. My name's Aiden, and my question for you would be, what advice would you have for newly married or engaged couples to not only grow closer to each other, but to God and to keep God a priority throughout their whole marriage? Thanks, Aiden, for your question. Let me kind of rephrase it a little bit. What advice would you give to engaged and married couples in keeping God as the prominent part of their relationship? Great question. Well, first and foremost, I would encourage you to pray together as a couple. Now this may be challenging because we can be more uh, comfortable with praying privately, huh? We uh, are used to saying our own personal prayers. But it's important to pray as a couple. You know, spirituality is, is one of the, uh, the intimacies of marriage. There's four intimacies, the physical intimacy, uh, the emotional intimacy, intellectual intimacy, and the spiritual intimacy. And if you pull any one of those out, that, that stool, let's say a four-legged stool, is not going to be uh, sound. And that's why it's important to have a strong spirituality uh, in your uh, engagement, your preparing for marriage, as well as your marriage. The, uh, uh, that praying together invites the other person into the most private, most personal part of your life, doesn't it? You allow them to overhear what you are telling God. And it helps that person to know how to support you. Those, uh, let's say, for example, you're having a struggle at work. And so that, that person is going to be saying, your, your spouse, your in, uh, intended, is going to be saying a prayer for you while you're at work because they know that that's what's going on. And without even anything being said, because they overheard your prayer. Don't be afraid of that. Immerse yourself into uh, into that praying together. You you can pray together by uh, reading the holy scriptures. You know, look look ahead to the upcoming uh, Sunday readings. You can go onto the USCCB website, and you can pull up the Sunday readings, or you can use apps such as iBrevery or iMissile that give you the readings, and it's easy just to click on the day and then read the readings. Do that together. You know, pick, pick the gospel, for, for example, and pray through the gospel. It's kind of a Lexio Divina, but pray through it and then uh, have a chance to talk about it. You know, what is this gospel saying to, uh, to you? What's it saying to me? And then by through that sharing, we, we gain understanding, don't we? And it also prepares us to see how the priest does then, or the deacon at the mass that weekend. Another way would be, uh, say, a, tr a traditional way of praying the rosary together uh, as, a, as a couple, as a family. When we unite ourselves together in prayer, it uh, uh, is, helps form such a strong bond. Don't be afraid of that. I remember growing up in my family, uh, every Sunday night we pray the rosary together. You know, we were milking cows, but uh, after we milked cows, we prayed the rosary together. And we could not watch Walt Disney, the wonderful world of Disney, until we finished our rosary. So you made sure we, we got our prayers in. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, opportunity would be to, uh, to celebrate, make sure you're celebrating the sacraments together. Being able to be... Uh, together when you when the Christ is manifesting himself in such a powerful way through the through the Eucharist 
uh, being uh, celebrating the, uh, the sacrament of reconciliation, going with, with each other. Now, you might not be able to sit in with each other with confession, but you can be there and go to confession each other and uh, uh, sense that. And then you're, you're developing uh, a, a healthy habit, you know, say it be once a month. Say it be, you know, whatever it is needed by you yourself. But being able to, to celebrate those sacraments together is another way of strengthening your bond of, as you prepare for marriage or at, within your marriage itself. Another way, very simple way, uh, would be when you uh, get ready to depart from each other. Maybe you're uh, going home after a date or maybe uh, you're leaving for the day for work. But you uh, um, take your other, your the, your spouse or your uh, intended into your arms and and trace a cross on their foreheads, you know, and, and words such as uh, "May God watch over you, bless you, and protect you until I see you again." What you're doing is you're bringing God into that particular moment, into your relationship, and you're doing it in a conscious way. So if something simple as that, but something concrete. Uh, that helps you be aware of how God is present in your relationship. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, I want to talk about uh, the preparation and the maintenance. You know, and, and with preparation, uh, couples come and see the priest. So once they announce their engagement, you know, and the whistles are blown and many smiles are shared, uh, next call will probably be to the church to set up a, a time for a wedding. Now, at most parishes, you need to meet with the priest beforehand, and the priest will uh, tell you what's required in, in uh, uh, preparing for marriage. And usually it involves uh, 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 sitting down and talking with the priest and getting a bunch of general information, also for the priest to get to know you, how you uh, got to know each other, how you came how, uh, to, uh, to this point where you are now ready to pledge your love to one another for the rest of your lives. And so the priest will do a number of different things that's required, you know, for example, a focus, which is a facilitating open communication between couples. And uh, he might, you will also need to attend a joy-filled marriage weekend. But it's ways to help you prepare for your marriage, to help you address any issues that uh, uh, that might be present. Sometimes we don't want to talk about issues, do we? We'd rather, you know, push them back under the rug or just cover them up altogether. But it's important that we deal with any anything that might be an irritant. Deal with it now. Talk about it now. Because if it's an irritant now, it's probably going to be an irritant later. Our married couples can probably speak to that, right? Think about back in your marriage prep. Did you have things that came up? And maybe you find yourself still struggling with those same things today. And it's with married couples, you know, as you, as, you, as you go through your married life, you went through marriage prep, most of you probably did. Well, your priest is here for you ongoing as well. It's just like you go in and have your vehicle tuned up on a regular basis, right? Your marriage, you need to go see your priest so that you can talk through the things, celebrate the, uh, the wonders and uh, seeking help and advice for those things that may be a struggle. Don't come to the priest when it's, there's, uh, you know, one person's already shut out the other person and uh, uh, there's no hope. You need to come to the priest ongoing to help you uh, continue to maintain uh, that place in your lives where you can hold true to your, your vows all the days of your life. So being able to uh, also seek out uh, marriage encounters, uh, retrovise, uh, opportunities that help you uh, with retreats, to help you grow in your relationship as husband and wife. And so those will be available to you, engaged couples as well, for you to take advantage of. It's going to, they're going to help you uh, to grow, to, uh, to be able to be faithful in your vows. That's so important. Continue to build trust. Oh, let's see. And lastly, I want to encourage you 
to treat each other, to treat each other as Christ is standing right before you. Could you imagine that? Whether it's your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whether it's your husband or wife, when you look at them, you see Christ. Actually, that goes for all of us in, the, in, in our human lives to see the other person as Christ, to treat each other person as they are Christ. How would we be more patient? How would we be more kind? How would we be more understanding, forgiving, merciful? How would we be, uh, how would we treat that person? And for those of you who are uh, engaged and, and already married, treat your spouse or your intended as if they are Christ. You know, we need to, uh, to do that so much in our lives. You know, so often misunderstandings can pop up, right? Uh, or that we didn't, uh, we did something without thinking or that we said something that we should have never said. We need to be able to, to recognize those, those mistakes, and that's what they are, mistakes. But when you've developed a, a relationship, forgiveness is a part of that relationship. But don't take advantage of it. You know, treasure it as, as, a, as a beautiful gift. Being able to, you know, if you find yourself in any time in your life, if there's something that you don't want to share with your intended with your spouse oh my golly go and share it with them don't hold anything back oh maybe you can hold back a planning a surprise party or a birthday or a Christmas gift but don't hold anything back your relationship needs to be open you know I know I'm not married but if I was my spouse would have access to my phone my spouse would have access to all my passwords, except for my Amazon account. And, they, and, but they would, my life would be an open book to them just as their life would be an open book to me. Because I wouldn't want to have anything that I would not want to share with them. Because you're building trust, right? And isn't that the important thing in our life? To build trust. We might want to harken back to the image of the divine mercy and say, Jesus, I trust in you. Because it's a challenging thing, but yeah, yeah, very rewarding. So thanks again for asking the question, Aiden. Know that I pray for all you uh, couples that are engaged or about to be engaged or preparing for your wedding days, as well as I pray for all you married couples out there. God bless and make it a great day. Bye.